Hello everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. And welcome back to the Sofa Squad. Now, before we get into everything, we're going to do a couple of little uh, State of the Sofa addresses. We had our party for the 2500 subscriber uh, celebration over the last weekend, and it was a blast. Thank you, everybody who showed up. That was so much fun, and thank you, everybody, for subscribing and following my channel, being part of the Sofa Squad. This has been an amazing experience, so thank you. Also, we have the Please Hold Cups in, available at your local Teespring store. Thank you for shopping. Uh, every cup of coffee is like a new cup of coffee out of it. Also, we're going to be continuing with our regularly scheduled program uh, Wednesday night for the book club and also Monday night. If you've started following me on that night, we've been doing kind of an eating type hangout thing. Still going to do that, but we're just calling it the Sofa Squad Unwind and it's a place for us to hang out on Monday evenings to unwind, chat about whatever y'all can decide. I'll be doing a Patreon live show after that probably. I'll put more information about that, but the links in for all that kind of stuff is in the description down below. So... Without further ado, let's get into today's video. Okay, every time I turn around, the Dulos case has this going on, that going on, this going on, that going on. I thought it was stalling out a little bit. It just in the way of, you know, some of the stuff they were kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel, such as the his attorney coming out and being like, oh, she's disappeared on her own and this, that, and the other. And, you know, I've had some interesting discussions with some people about that. And, you know, I, I'm always open to anything. I'll go where the evidence points me. You know, and that's how I am. As long as everybody's civil about stuff, I'll go where the evidence points me. So what I want to do today is go over several articles about just some things going on that I think kind of can point to a larger picture per se. So let's go ahead and get into the first article. Jennifer Dulo's case, Michelle Traconas on tight leash while outside of Connecticut. So Michelle Traconas has wanted to travel. She's going to be leaving the state for the weekend. And her and her lawyer, Andrew Bauman, appear before Judge Gary White for about like five minutes, like I said. Uh, she asked the judge for permission to leave the, uh, the state between June 30th and July 17th. So, you know, a good little hefty three-week trip there. Uh, State's attorney Ricardo Colangelo did not object, which I think is interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but he asked Tricona to be on a tight leash with her movements, restricted to the property where she's traveling, which that's a thing. So they're going to do that. Uh, she's going to still have that GPS on that's monitoring her. Uh, and so that was kind of all it was. So she gets to leave town. So a couple of things that jump out to me in that is I think it's interesting that the state attorney did not object. Uh, to me, that's probably a positive sign for her because, I mean, to me, if they are feeling like, oh my gosh, this woman has something majorly to do in it, or you know what I mean, or some kind of major information, I just feel like they would be harder on her. Now, the fact that they're saying you can go, but you have to do A, B, and C, well, obviously they don't want her to go and, you know, do whatever. I think, and we're going to get into this in a later article, another big part of this is keeping her separate and not speaking to photos. So... Anyways, let's continue. When they came out of the court hearing for that, her and her lawyer declined to speak about anything, and she's going to be returning to court the day after she gets back in town on July 18. So now, with that being said, let's take a look at another article in relation to their, to Jennifer and Fotis' uh, contact between one another. Okay, so another article here, it's called, uh, or it's titled, I apologize, No Contact Order Applies to a Estranged Husband and Missing Mom Case. Now, this one I think is very interesting because I think it's very telling in regards to the divide that is getting ready to split. Because we've been curious to see, well, what's up between them? You know, what's going on? She was rumored to have heard that she loves him and all this kind of stuff. And so let's get into it. So a lawyer for the girlfriend of a man arrested in connection with the disappearance of his estranged wife was granted a no contact order. Bam. Draconis's lawyer asked the judge to prohibit Fotis Dulos and his team from contacting her. So the motion was filed on Tuesday, a day after Fotis Dulos' lawyer, Norm Pattis, requested a judge to clarify the conditions of his client's release uh, because Fotis wanted to see Draconis. Now, remember that, you know, this lawyer, Norm Pattis, is doing a lot of speaking for a lot of people. And I think it's very interesting the public story he's trying to spin with us 
And I think he's putting words in people's mouths, to be quite honest. And I think that's why that we're seeing this separation take place. So the motion filed on behalf of Traconis asked the court to prohibit Photostulos and his attorneys, agents, or representatives from having any contact with her whatsoever. So, I mean, that's, you know, severing that. Another place that this is coming from is that Pattis, Fotis's lawyer, is asking for the charges against Draconis to be dismissed. Uh, and this is what he says. We are calling on the state to drop the charges against Michelle so that she is available to testify in Fotis's defense. Uh, he said in a statement, we're asking that the charges against her be dropped so that she can feel free to testify without fearing the consequences. Now, Norm is sitting here saying that she has, you know, his alibi. And even Traconis' lawyers said that the recent statements and motion were made solely to serve the purpose and interest of Photos Dulos at the expense of Traconis. If you look at some of the things that were going on, because remember he orchestrated this meeting where she went by the house and it was over her, her saying that she loves him and she doesn't know what he did. I, I mean, there's this, his attorney is spinning a public persona image for him right now. You know, I think his attorney is saying, go out jogging, go do this, act normal, da 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 da, da. And again, you know, uh, innocent until proven guilty type situation. Well, he has current charges on him that aren't looking good, and she seems to be wrapped up in this somehow. So this lawyer seems to be, you know, his lawyer, Norm Pattis, he just really seems to be kind of weaving this tale. And I think Traconis' team, regardless, of, like, Traconis and Fotis could be like, we want to get together with each other, but these lawyers are going to come together and be like, hey, you know, they each want to win the case or get their client off the case or whatever. Um, and, and so I just think it's not a good idea. And in cases like this, typically the judges don't want the, the, the defendants to sit here and talk with each other and whatnot. That's why the judge, when she asked to go to New York or whatever, I mean, the judge made her verbally confirm, you cannot contact Fotis. And she, you know, verbally confirmed this. So the, you know, she might still love him, whatever, but this, when things get this serious, I mean, it is what it is. And to me, the evidence right now points to, unless they come out with something earth-breaking, earth shattering, whatever you want to call it, that says, yeah, that definitely was not them on that video, then we can talk. Uh, so let's continue to the next one. Okay, so the next article is in regards to the one, the only, Mr. Dulos speaking out. Uh, I was very surprised at this, but what he said, I was like, okay, you know, whatever. Uh, so basically, all he did, he did not acknowledge anything about Jennifer. Now, you know that his attorney, Norm Pattis, I mean, he prepped this whole situation. I just feel like right now, Fotis is a puppet that's doing whatever Norm tells him to do. And if this is a situation where this man has truly been, you know, framed or whatever, well then, okay, that's what anybody would do. And if he's trying to get out of trouble of having committed a heinous crime, well then, of course, that's what he's going to do. So that's what also makes it all very unbelievable. But he came out, he spoke to the press, and all he said was, I just want to tell my children that they're constantly on my mind, and that I love them, and I miss them very much. So, you know, and that's kind of one of those things where, of course, he's going to say that. Um, but because all this controversy surrounds him, you know, it's one of those things where I'm just like, mm, okay, you know, great that you reached out to your children that way. Uh, but I just feel like the truth will come forth in some of this in regards to let's see what happens with the custody battle. Let's see what happens with these things because I would hope that, you know, especially if things are looking like he had something to do this, well, obviously he's going to end up in you know, prison and the children will hopefully go with the, uh, the grandmother's family or whoever they're trying to get him with. Well, you know, I thought that was interesting. Of course, after he said that, Norm took over the conversation. You know, it is what it is. The children got to maybe hear from their father, although I don't know if they're, I mean, we don't know if the children are even being exposed to any of this. I hope not. Uh, so let's look at the next one. Okay, so the last thing we're going to look at is one about the divorce case. And this is where Fotos wants to uh, halt the divorce case. And this, I think, is very interesting. Uh, so lawyers representing Fotos Dulos asked a judge to halt his two-year his two-year divorce case uh, with Jennifer because his estranged wife is missing. So we know this. Uh, it's hard to have a divorce case. And I've been curious about well, what's going to happen now that she's not in the picture. And this is a quote here. A proceeding in any manner without the plaintiff deprives the defendant of his due process rights of cross-examination and his ability to conduct discovery from the plaintiff. The lawyers Norm Pattis and Richard Rochland wrote an emotion filed Friday. Uh, they cited a motion filed Tuesday by Reuben Midler, a lawyer representing Jennifer Dulos. Uh, and this is the quote. 
to permit Attorney Midler to proceed on that motion, or any motion, that he undoubtedly did not discuss with his client as it was filed after she was reported missing, uh, and who currently does not intend to bring to any hearing given her status, is not a tenable position for the court to sustain. Uh, due process requires that motions are prosecuted by the litigants to the actions with the assistance of their lawyers, not by lawyer alone, without the input of their clients, the motion says. Now, this came two days after Fotis Dulos was in family court for a hearing in his divorce case about a confidential custody report found in his home. Midler says that Pattis was besmirching Jennifer Dulos without her being able to defend herself, which, you know, is true, but she's not there. I feel like it's the situation's being exploited, uh, you know, because obviously she's missing. She can't come to this, and so, well, how do you divorce someone that's missing? I mean, I'm not sure, and I actually kind of want to look into that. And if anybody knows off the top of their head, drop it like it's hot in those comments. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out and what takes place. So again, we're going to be following all of this closely and see what happens. So I'm going to run because we're getting ready to have a Class A meltdown in here. Per use, Bailey's turned up. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you have a great week. And don't forget to come hang out with us Monday and Wednesday here on the sofa. I will see y'all soon. Bye-bye.